in the session on behalf of ITU. So I'm also a guest like you. <laughs> so um, I will start uh, actually this session uh, by giving you a, a brief about the dynamic coalition. And uh, this presentation was actually uh, prepared by Christina Boetti, uh, who is uh, at ITU uh, T uh, and in charge of study group five on uh, ICT and climate change um, uh, at ITU. Uh, so very briefly, the Dynamic Coalition, this is actually our sixth meeting for the Dynamic Coalition on the Internet and Climate Change. Uh, the Dynamic Coalition uh, actually was created as an open body uh, to develop um, uh, uh, the relationship between the Internet and climate change or to explore more uh, how we could uh, reduce uh, the emissions of ICT and the impact of the Internet on climate change and the environment, as well as to discuss the potential that the Internet could have on uh, issues related uh, to climate change, su such as disaster relief and uh, some of the issues that were discussed yesterday, I believe, uh, in the workshop. Uh, the Dynamic Coalition actually is an open uh, forum, it's an open uh, group, from different multi-stakeholders. I myself come from the government. Uh, I'm sure we have academia here, uh, the private sector. It has uh, 51 members. And um, as you can see the list of members here, we have quite a list. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have many attendees uh, today, uh, but we have about 51 members uh, from different uh, regions, including Africa, uh, the Arab region, uh, Latin America, uh, of course, Asia, Europe, uh, uh, um, the, the States, um, uh, many members actually from all over the world who are very much interested in the issue of ICT and uh, climate uh, change. Uh, the Dynamic Coalition actually is functioning under uh, the supervision or under uh, the guidance of the ITU. So the idea was uh, emanated actually from the ITU uh, about six years ago. And uh, it has uh, very uh, simple terms of reference that are quite relevant at the same well. Uh, so it is sharing information on future plans and initiatives for, from different members. So I'll be looking forward to hearing from you uh, during uh, this session. Uh, promoting the issue of climate change uh, in discussions at the IGF. And it's interesting that this uh, year's theme is actually on sustainable development. And when we talk about sustainable development, we have to talk about the environment, we have to talk about climate change. I believe that this issue is not yet uh, fully uh, or properly positioned on the IGF agenda. So I hope that with your help and your participation, we can further highlight the importance of the internet and uh, the environment or the internet and climate change on the IGF agenda. Another important issue that uh, uh, is included in the terms of reference of uh, the Dynamic Coalition is what are the key issues related to the internet and climate change and what is the internet impact on climate change and what is its potential to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Another area of interest is possible uh, forms of cooperation between the members. What are the gaps? And uh, what are the partnerships and projects that could be leveraged? Uh, also, one of the main uh, uh, objectives of the Dynamic Coalition is to make sure that we are properly coordinating with the different entities working on climate change, namely UNFCCC, and the other bodies within the ICT sector that are currently involved in this important issue. Again, uh, the Dynamic Coalition is a multi-stakeholder uh, forum. It's a multi-stakeholder group, and uh, all stakeholders are uh, uh, very much welcome uh, to have their input into its activities. Uh, yesterday, actually, the ITU uh, jointly organized a workshop on the power of the Internet for disaster management and environmental control. I just would like to allude to this only uh, for the moment, and then uh, later I would leave uh, my colleague Thomas to talk more about details of this workshop that took place uh, yesterday. Um, finally, uh, um, in, in, in general, if you wish to find uh, more information or background about the Dynamic Coalition, 
I would like to invite you to uh, check uh, the website of IQ and Climate Change, as well as uh, the pages of the Dynamic Coalition on the Internet and Climate Change, which you find uh, in front of you on the slide. Um, thank you very much. Uh, with this brief introduction, I would like actually allow me to ask you to introduce yourself, uh, Hossein. So maybe we can start with Thomas. Thomas Molinowski from ITU, uh, uh, head of corporate strategy division. So, I'm, I'm, I, from my view perspective, we're very happy to be part of the dynamic coalition and support the work of it. And also, from and also, we're even more happy that it, when we do that in ITU, as we are a membership-driven organization, that we have very active our member states active in that work. And as uh, illustration today, Nadine is uh, presenting and, uh, and on behalf of ITU, and <laughs> on, on behalf of ITU as an organization, which is yeah. with, with all the members, you know, with 193 member states and uh, 700 sector members and uh, more than 60 academia members. So I think that, uh, you know, so we're happy to bring that part, uh, uh, that part uh, to the dynamic coalition, and hopefully have a good discussion and to hear from you as well uh, about your work. Good morning, uh, YJ Park from uh, SUNY Korea. Yeah, I'm one of the academia. And uh, as I talked to some of you briefly this morning, uh, the main uh, motivation for me to come to this dynamic coalition today is uh, I see a lot of these connections between the internet and climate change negotiation, especially uh, my surroundings back in Songdo, Korea, where a lot of this the intergovernmental uh, Secretaria are uh, coming to Songdo, like uh, including the Green Climate Fund and also the UN Office of Sustainable Development. Uh, that's the climate change side. But in terms of like ICT side, we have the UN ASCAP, uh, APCICT, that trains, uh, you know, the developing countries government officers uh, regarding the, the ICT issues. So, and also there are other like ICT institutions which are going to be hosted in Songdo, like World Bank Cyberspace uh, Center. Uh, so that's the one of the ICT institutions. So as this dynamic coalition is addressing like some correlation between the internet and climate change, there will be, you know, very strong connections between two subject matters in the global level which I am very interested in. Uh, if there is any, I will be willing to contribute more about the you know, future activities. So for example, like the Green Climate Fund and also the GGGI, which is another the climate change institution in Korea, uh, they are very interested in some kind of you know, working together with developing countries, how they can uh, be narrow the gap uh, for that developing countries uh, with ICT, I think. And so, yeah, if there's any uh, the issues I can uh, contribute to this, uh, I will be happy to do that. Thank you so much. Um, good morning. Uh, my name is Ian Peter. I'm from Australia, but I have no relationship with the Australian government of a formal means and note that the Australian Prime Minister only a couple of hours ago, described the intervention from um, the UN describing the current bushfire disaster which they're facing around my home and in most of New South Wales and Australia as having some relationship to climate change. Or something like that, you know, the Australian government's a long way away from this. I come into this from civil society. Um, I've been a long-time member of the Internet Governance Caucus uh, coordinating civil society efforts in internet governance and came into the whole area of the internet in the late mid to late 1980s working with groups of people to connect environmental groups around the world into the internet as a platform for us to coordinate work. So it was originally with the Association for Progressive Communications and we had GreenNet and EcoNet and all sorts of networks trying to link. So 
the internet has helped us to coordinate. Um, I would love to see some action from those of you who represent governments and represent coalitions of governments. I can assure you I will cooperate fully with anything um, and would encourage you to be a very dynamic coalition. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. My name is uh, Osvaldo Citerio. I come to Venezuela, Latin America. Um, I need it for the identification of the uh, your ideas uh, of the climate change. It's very important for my region. Um, I represent uh, the civil civil society, and my my question is. What is the people of Latin America is involved for this project? Thank you. Thank you so much and welcome. If you don't mind, could you write your name and uh, position and uh, email so that we keep a record uh, and we invite you in the future meetings of the Dynamic Coalitions as well. So actually we're here from uh, different... Uh, very diverse uh, places, Egypt, Korea, Australia, Venezuela. <laughs> um, I hope we'll have uh, a, an interesting discussion. And um, allow me please now to make a presentation about the different activities that are taking place at the ITU in the area actually of uh, ICT and climate change. And I hope this would uh, shed the light on uh, the activities uh, it's not the ITU as, uh, as an organization as much as what the member states, the 194, I believe, Thomas, 93 uh, countries are interested in uh, currently because uh, most of uh, these activities are actually driven uh, by uh, the different uh, countries. And please, if we have any remote questions or remote participants who would like to intervene at any point, uh, please interrupt me. I'd be happy to uh, take a short stop and uh, resume back. Okay, so uh, I would like also to mention that I have uh, a different hat within ITU. I'm actually uh, working on uh, the issues of ICT and climate change within uh, study group 5 of uh, the ITUT. So I'm rapporteur of um, the uh, ITUT uh, question on ICT and climate change. And I've been happy uh, actually to do this for uh, a couple of years now. I've learned a lot from this experience. Uh, briefly, as you know, and as Thomas uh, mentioned, the ITU is uh, composed of 193 member states with 700 private sector uh, members and uh, 63 of uh, the academia. Um, as you know, and uh, I'm sure this would be um, uh, an important fact to note as well, that ICT are a powerful uh, cross-cutting tool. Actually, by the end of 2013, we're going to have about 6.8 billion um, a total a billion um, mobile cellular subscriptions, almost as many as there are people on the planet. And we estimate about 2.7 billion people will also be connected to the Internet. Uh, so with these numbers, the ICT is becoming a very important and powerful uh, tool uh, all over the world, a tool that could uh, be very uh, instrumental in mitigating and adapting to the climate change. Uh, ICT actually plays a double role in climate change. Sometimes we look at ICT as part of the problem, 
because there is about 2% emissions of uh, CO2 from the ICT sector. We expect this to become 3.5% by 2020. So this is the side where uh, ICT or the internet is uh, part of the problem. However, the tools themselves, the ICT tools themselves, are part of the solution because we know that they provide different instruments that could help several sectors mitigate and adapt to the climate change, uh, very simply uh, through teleconferencing, dematerialization of transport, smart logistics, some motor si smart motor systems, metering, smart buildings. These are all tools uh, that are being used in different parts of the world to save energy as well as um, to uh, provide a better or irrational management of natural resources, particularly water and electricity. So different countries uh, have explored the use of ICT in uh, mitigating and adapting to climate change. Uh, many more countries are still uh, on the way to uh, understanding the full potential of ICT, which I hope uh, we can uh, actually help in disseminating and promoting through our forum here. Okay, one of the main instruments that have been uh, used to um, explore the potential of ICT and climate change or ICT and the environment has been Study Group 5 of the ITUT. What is the Study Group 5 doing? Actually, this is a real picture of the group uh, that has been taken, I think, uh, last February in Geneva. Uh, so Study Group 5 is the lead group for environment and climate change, ICT environment and climate change. It tackles also issues related to electromagnetic compatibility and electromagnetic effects. And uh, it is a multi-stakeholder group. It has international experts who come and discuss at least twice a year through intensive, uh, uh, intensive um, actually sessions, uh, different issues. We call them questions. Uh, so study group five itself is divided into these people are divided into three working parties. And the three working parties, each one of them is divided into different issues or different questions. So as you can see from this uh, very simple slide, the first working party works on damage prevention and safety. Working party two works on electromagnetic fields, emissions, immunity, and human exposure. And working party three, uh, which I am a member of, it works on ICT and climate change. These groups are open, so I would encourage uh, all participants today, actually, if you are interested, to uh, send me an email or to send Christina Buetti an email and to start exploring uh, the potential of participation. Throughout the presentation, I will point out to certain activities that really require more and more input from all of us. So a working party three is divided into different questions, as I have mentioned before. Uh, question 13, for instance, tackles the environmental impact reduction, including e-waste. So it puts the standards for e-waste management, rational management of e-waste. It's a very important question. Uh, personally, as a member or, uh, of the government in Egypt, uh, I'm very much interested in this uh, particular issue. Uh, question 14 is also a very relevant question. It, it, uh, it discusses actually the low-cost sustainable telecommunication infrastructure for rural communications in developing countries. And we have many African countries participating in this question. This question is led by a colleague from the US. So it has a nice combination of uh, uh, developed and developing countries participating in it. Question 15 is the one I'm involved in personally. It's the ICT and adaptation to the effects of climate change. And what we're doing in this question is trying to collect actually the best practices for the use of ICT in adaptation and uh, issuing uh, a recommendation that would include standards and uh, that would be uh, used hopefully by different countries. We have realized that many countries have best practices in using ICT in adaptation. However, these best practices are not compiled and are not known by other countries. 
So our effort is to make use um, and to highlight uh, what is happening in the area of the use of ICT and adaptation. Question 16 is enhancing <coughs> the ICT environmental sustainability. Question 17 is about energy efficiency for the ICT sector and harmonization of environmental standards. Question 18 is methodologies for the assessment of environmental impact of ICT. And question 19 is power feeding systems. Now, what, what do these groups, uh, what do they produce at the end or what are their deliverables? Their deliverables is what you see in front of you they produce actually uh, uh, recommendations that include standards on different issues that uh, have been uh, presented a moment ago, such as uh, we call them L, uh, uh, for instance, uh, 1100, 1400, on different um, subjects that we have discussed. One, let me give you very concrete examples, and I think this is one of the, my favorite examples. Uh, that uh, uh, the L1000 has been actually produced on the universal power adapter. So this is a very, a very concrete uh, example that shows uh, what ITUT is doing. Uh, we have two, uh, uh, two important uh, or three important recommendations in this field. L1000 provides high-level requirements for a universal power adapter and charger solution that will really reduce the number of power adapters and chargers produced and recycled by widening their application to more devices and increasing their lifetime. So this is both a solution to reduce energy consumption and to reduce e-waste, very concrete solutions. Um, in uh, uh, L1000, the universal power adapter is focusing on mobile terminals. However, L1001 will provide requirements or provide requirements for a universal power adapter solution for stationary ICT devices. So this effort has been made for mobile devices and stationary ICT devices. And interesting, it has been the product of different uh, multinational corporations sitting together, agreeing together on the idea of a universal adapter, including also the involvement of governments as well as uh, different uh, member states of um, the ITU. So this is a very concrete, very tangible um, a product that I think will affect our lives in general. I would love actually to move with one adapter, not uh, three, four in my uh, bag. It would make my life much easier. <laughs> okay. Now, another very concrete example is, is a recommendation uh, L1300, and this is about green data centers. Uh, sometimes uh, people, uh, some people uh, imagine that just by having data centers, we have uh, that data centers equal being green spontaneously. However, there are many requirements, standards that are needed for the green for data centers to become truly green. So L1300 describes best practices aiming at reducing the negative impact on data centers on the climate. And um, uh, it improves, uh, it gives solutions for improving uh, existing ones to operate in an environmentally responsible manner. Um, for instance, uh, some of uh, the, the recommendation in the L1300 is applying best practices to cooling that would reduce the energy consumption of a typical data center by more than 50%. So this is the second very concrete example that would affect the work of governments and uh, multinationals in uh, general. Another very important area of work, uh, which I've mentioned uh, before, is uh, producing the methodologies for uh, for assessing the impact of ICT on uh, the environment. And uh, in this respect, I have to say that uh, this work of uh, methodologies is quite um, uh, complex at, uh, at study group five, and that there has been uh, a division of, um, of uh, methodologies. 
uh, first we have um, uh, L1400 that gives an overview and general principles on methodologies to assess the impact of ICT on climate change. Then the group working uh, in this respect has divided their work into three important uh, areas. Uh, assessing the environmental impact of ICT goods, networks, and services. This is one uh, recommendation. It's uh, L1410. And uh, environmental impact of ICT on, in organizations. This is L1420. And environmental impact of ICT projects, L1430. These are four uh, recommendations that have been already produced. There are more on the way. We have L1440 uh, on the environmental impact of ICT in cities, and L1450 on the environmental impact of ICT in countries. Each of these recommendations presents in details the different methodologies for assessing the impact of ICT in the different areas that they have specified and uh, put in separate uh, documents. So after going through uh, these examples, these concrete examples of products or of deliverables of uh, study group 5, I would like to shed the light on some of the multi-stakeholder groups that are already in place and that are extremely uh, important and uh, effective in the area of ICT and climate change. So one, one of these uh, areas is actually a focus group on smart sustainable cities. We call it FG SSC. SSC. Uh, the focus group on smart and sustainable cities is another mechanism uh, that is functioning within uh, the, I the ITT study group 5. Uh, and uh, the purpose of this uh, focus group is to discuss different um, how to standardize sm uh, smart and sustainable cities, how to help different cities become uh, smarter, and what are the important economic and environmental standards that should be integrated, uh, ICT standards that should be integrated in the functioning of these cities uh, to become uh, uh, smarter, as I mentioned. Uh, this focus group is open to all. It's a multi-stakeholder uh, group, and uh, it has been established in February. And already it has, uh, it has actually uh, held uh, several meetings. Uh, that discuss best practices in uh, smart cities. Uh, it held a meeting in Turin, in Italy, in Madrid, and there will be a forthcoming meeting in Peru, in Lima, in December 2013. Very important group, and it is led by uh, Telefonica. The chair of the group is uh, from Telefonica. The focus group itself, is divided into uh, four working groups uh, that are attempting to develop a roadmap for sustain sustainable uh, cities, studies on ICT infrastructure to build uh, smart sustainable cities, and standardization gaps, KPIs, and metrics. I encourage all of you who are interested uh, in uh, the Smart and Sustainable Cities Focus Group to visit the site of the ITU. Just write smart Focus Group Smart Sustainable Cities. You will find all the data about previous meetings, what the group is working on currently, and what are the deadlines for making contribution to this group because there is a very good uh, opportunity uh, to make a contribution currently to be presented in Peru, Lima, in uh, December 2013. Another very important focus group uh, that I've been personally involved in is the focus group on smart water management. And uh, the focus group on smart water management is really the product of a workshop that was held by ITU in Egypt, in Luxor, last April and that discuss the issues of smart water management 
uh, how uh, the, the scarcity of water is affecting uh, different continents. Uh, of course, uh, Africa, uh, to name one of these continents, but I think this is a problem that is faced in different parts of the world and that the whole world uh, has to confront and to deal with in a rational manner. Uh, the focus group attempts also to explore in details what are the different ICT solutions that could be used, and there are so many solutions. The issue is to collect them, uh, to compile them, and to disseminate and promote them in a systematic way. So the focus group will actually hold its first meeting uh, in Peru also, and the focus group is open to no new members uh, participating in it, uh, developing and developed countries members, as well as from academia and uh, multinationals. Uh, the main tasks and deliverables, as you can see, is to collect and document information on national, regional, and international smart water management initiatives, specify the roles to be played by ICT in smart water management, develop a list mapping key stakeholders involved in the area of smart water and ICT, because uh, even the, the, the smart water uh, part, ICT and smart water key stakeholders are not well known, and we need to compile a list of these uh, stakeholders. Develop key performance indicators to assess the impact achieved through the use of ICTs. Develop a set of methodologies for estimating the impact of ICTs on water conservation. Identify water management ICT applications. Draft technical reports that address standardization gaps and identify new, st new standardization work in this important area of interest. So I invite you and encourage you, particularly colleagues from Latin America, <laughs> because it's easy to go to Peru <laughs> in this case, but all of you are invited, of course, to participate actively in uh, the Smart uh, Water Management uh, Focus Group. Uh, another set of uh, work that is also conducted by the ITU, ITUT, cooperation and partnerships, and in this case I would like to mention briefly that the ITU has, ITUT has developed a toolkit on environmental sustainability for the ICT sector. Uh, many countries actually, uh, or, or I would say many uh, multinationals or um, or uh, corporations working in the area of uh, ICT have been uh, seeking actually uh, to, to make the, the, uh, their work more sustainable. So this toolkit is a practical support, a detailed practical support on how ICT companies can build sustainability into their operations and management. It's, um, it's a standardized checklist of sustainability requirements specific to the ICT sector. So it's a very uh, down-to-earth, practical uh, guidelines to uh, different corporations, entities, maybe ministries focusing on ICT and how they could make their work uh, more uh, sustainable. Uh, briefly, the toolkit uh, includes uh, an introduction, uh, sustainable ICT in corporate organization, uh, sustainable products, sustainable buildings, end-of-life management, uh, general specifications and KPIs, assessment framework, uh, a really overview or uh, comprehensive uh, guidelines to uh, different ICT corporations. Uh, as you can see, uh, those, uh, it's, a, it's a truly multi-stakeholder corporation. You, you have uh, over 50 partners who have contributed with their input and um, ideas into this toolkit. So uh, it's a practical uh, work uh, in general uh, that can be implemented uh, easily um, in the different corporations. Uh, another area of work of ITUT in this uh, field is actually research and studies. And uh, I would like to mention here um, that uh, there has been um, an, an attempt to identify different policy needs in the area of climate change, uh, such as the case of Korea, 
where there has been a quantification of uh, greenhouse gas emissions reduction effects achieved by ICT. This study is available, greening by ICT solutions in Korea between 2011 and 2020. Uh, uh, 2020. A very important study. Another important study is actually climate change adaptation, mitigation, and information communication technology in Ghana. And it shows actually the potential of ICT in adapting and mitigating uh, to clim uh, mitigation the effects of climate change. And it has a very concrete case, the case of Ghana. So it takes uh, examples from an African country that has been suffering from uh, different impacts of climate change as well as from e-waste uh, issues very serious uh, e-waste uh, problematics and uh, these, uh, this study is also available. In terms of raising awareness activities, uh, the ITUT holds uh, annually what we call the ITU Green Standards Week. It's an annual event and so it's a global platform for discussion and knowledge sharing to raise awareness on the importance and opportunities of using ICT standards to build a green economy and ensure a sustainable future and it brings together leading specialists in the field from top policy makers to engineers, designers, planners and government officials. Uh, the upcoming workshops and events, uh, there is the joint coordination activity that will take place in Peru and uh, let me uh, clarify that the GCA or joint coordination activity is also a forum that brings organizations, different organizations from outside the ITU who are all working in the area of uh, climate change. So you could have uh, UNFCCC, you could have uh, World Meteorological Association, uh, uh, UNEP, uh, whatever, you name it. It's a way, it, uh, as the name uh, denotes, it's a joint coordination activity in the real sense of the word. And uh, there will be also a workshop on smart and sustainable cities in uh, Peru. Also the meeting of the focus group on the smart and sustainable cities, the focus group on smart water management, the ITUT study group 5 and ITU UNESCO events on smart sustainable cities will take place in Uruguay in uh, March 2014. In conclusion, <coughs> actually, uh, I would like uh, just to mention that the effort of ICT and climate change is by nature a multi-stakeholder thing. It's not just a multi-stakeholder, it's also a, an effort that uh, brings people from different sectors together. It's this area of work where people from environmental, from the environment or specialists in the environment have to cooperate very closely with ICT experts uh, to give actually concrete uh, results and this might be one of the big challenges but I think that uh, the ITU has put in place many mechanisms, many forums, multi-stakeholders forums that would allow for such uh, coordination of activities, open coordination of activities. The second point that I would like to uh, stress on is that the, the, the potential of ICT has yet to be explored in full. Uh, in terms of practical guidance as well as in terms of promotion and uh, dissemination. I think that many people uh, are also uh, on the level of governments do not realize yet the full power or the full potential of ICT in sustainable development. It's, it's quite a new area relatively speaking and that we have a very important role to play in it. So I would encourage you all actually to participate more, more and more in these activities and I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, now I would like maybe to invite you to give me uh, or to provide uh, more details about your work so that we could see what other issues we would like to include in uh, the work of the Dynamic Coalition. I would open the floor to you. Sir, please. This might be easier with a microphone. I just have a thank you. That was very interesting to hear, and I'm very glad to see that the ITU is involved in this and doing comprehensive work with the uh, governments as partners. And I notice also amongst your members a number of good, strong corporate partners as well, which leads me to raise this area of concern. And um, uh, 
particularly I'm concentrating in on the area of waste, which of course is huge in terms of what we throw away. Now, a major cause of all this waste is a manufacturing principle of designed obsolescence. And I'm just wondering whether this is being addressed and whether it could be addressed. Um, it's almost a principle of manufacturing profitability that my phone after 18 months is so old I must throw it away. My computer after two years is so old I must throw it away. And if this trend continues, we, the waste problem, no matter how good your recycling gets, cannot be dealt with. So well, as well as dealing with the waste once it does occur, and I do realise there is good work going on in various places there, which is quite fantastic to see, I think there is something that we really need to do with corporations to examine this part of their modus operandi which is to design things to be thrown away rather rapidly. That is causing the toxic waste from the rare earth materials and things like that, which we're just throwing into landfill. The best efforts are not stopping that. We are creating a very toxic environment by parts of our manufacturing profitability. So I'm very interested in any comments on that, and I would love to see some work on that, and I think it would be a terrific thing for your group to take up. Thank you very much, sir. Maybe we can take a round of questions and then we will discuss. Uh, yes, yeah. Again, like I, I've been very impressed about uh, this very in-depth presentation about what's going on with this uh, dynamic coalition and ITU activity. And one of the things I've been wondering is there are a lot of this initiative about smart thing, like a smart water, smart city, but uh, maybe we also have to address like a smart phone and smart TV and smart uh, grid, for example, because the smart grid is one of the very relevant uh, subject matter which embraces like ICT and electricity, therefore like, you know, environmental issues. But also like a smartphone issues, I, uh, I know there will be another session during this week about the governance issues uh, because of this, the, the convergence of this internet and the telecommunication and that is the, the product of the smartphone which strangely doesn't really seem to be discussed that much uh, at the ITU arena. Yes, I know there are a lot of the different kind of platforms you can address that issues. Likewise, I know there are, you know, various initiatives about the city dialogue. It's not only ITU the track, there are a lot of this uh, city concentrated this uh, the global dialogue about how to uh, set up some kind of this sub regulation for the cities around the world. So even though there are some overlapping dialogues, I think ITU as the traditional telecommunication uh, body, I think it is uh, the relevant for ITU to talk about those different smart things and including that uh, smartphones and smart TV. For example, like I know the, in Europe, the people use the term of connected TV instead of a smart TV. But in US and in Asia, we use a lot of this smart TV, and which is going to be the very uh, big platform, uh, which might like replace like a smart phone uh, in the near future. So it will be interesting to see how smart TV or smartphone is influencing this, uh, the, the climate change and how to reduce uh, this CO2 in their own capacity. That might be interesting uh, component uh, for the future of this uh, study group five. Thank you very much. Do you have other comments? Eh, in la, 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 la <coughs> Latin America is uh, very import interesting for climate change adaptation uh, methodology. Is 
what is your opinion of the, uh, the importance or relevance of um, this uh, provider of the new solution for the climate change? Um, and the, into Latin America, uh, the sector IT is uh, very expensive for for up for implement for the startup on tech the, the technologies. Um, the second question is: uh, Is possible for to participate of the reunion of the Peru in, in 2000? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thomas, uh, would you like to address Thomas? Uh, actually, um, I would like to just address maybe the first question from uh, the colleague from Australia about um, the issue of uh, the obsolescence of uh, technologies. And uh, I think this is uh, the challenge and the success of study group five because I've seen uh, multinational corporations fighting with each other about, uh, for instance, the universal adapter. And uh, there are very um, strong discussions now about universal charger, because uh, there has been attempt exactly to address this issue of obsolescence. Maybe it comes gradually, incrementally, and it's not easy, of course, for the, the corporations to make concessions. But I've started to see a trend uh, to compromise on certain uh, issues, such as the adapter, or maybe do a study of a, on a universal charger. There might be, uh, after that, developed into a recommendation for also one universal charger. I think the way is still quite long, and it's very difficult to ask um, all the big names to make uh, immediate concessions, but I think that there is a realization that part of the problem lies in the sector itself. The, the very quick obsolescence of, uh, of tools and technologies that do happen. So I, I don't know if I've answered your questions. I'm just um, feeling that we are on the way to addressing this, but uh, it, it is still a long path. And uh, I think the only way is to have the different corporations sitting together on one table and each one voicing uh, uh, its concerns and uh, slowly each one would put some pressure on the other. Also sitting with governments uh, is, is very useful because there is this uh, dialogue that is taking place. Uh, so I hope that study group 5 would be able to make more and more uh, successes in um, uh, <laughs> rationalizing uh, the production of uh, ad different adapters, different chargers, maybe later uh, on other issues uh, as well. Uh, concerning the second question, I would like uh, Thomas, if possible, to address it, uh, the question from the colleague in uh, Korea about uh, smart grids, smartphones, and uh, this new uh, issues. Are there other questions within ITU that address these uh, issues, Thomas? Would you like to... Thank you very much. So first of all, oh, very, very mild. So first of all, regarding the um, first question and second, I think just adding a bit of the universal charge and universal adapter and recycling. So it's actually, I was rather just proud of that work that we've been doing. And now our member says we're doing the universal charge and adapter. And we have the specific resolution, uh, recommendation L1000, well, L1001. And uh, it's not only to have recommendation in the standard, but it's also how to implement it. And for example, there are recently now, the so European Parliament is now discussing the amendment to so-called radio communications uh, and terminal equipment directive, where they will make it compulsory for all the European, uh, so for all the equipment that is delivered into Europe to have universal mobile equipment, to have universal ad adapters. And already, so many uh, manufacturers are starting to shift their phones without the adapters, and that would allow that this type of universality will allow everyone then to move away from 
shipping the phone with adapter, but without the so separating that. So that's right. At least one element becomes less, you know, long longevity at least of one element is now ensured by that. You know, so that's I think first step, and that's kind of how we try to move step by step there. Also, I do have the uh, the UT also developed recommendation L dot one. And 1,100 about recycling of rare metals found in equipment devices. So that's again trying to address that other thing, uh, other other thing that you know how to at least some parts of that could be recycled and, and uh, put back into production. So this kind of step by step approach, which I agree is an issue that we have to tackle. And I think again the good thing is that we have both, as you well mentioned, manufacturers. We have both sector members, manufacturers and operators, and also member states in that. So that allows push that process forward and also then advocate for the regulatory frameworks to be adjusted as it's happening now in the European Union and hopefully will happen in other regions uh, as well. So, and that's also the, you know, the question of the smartness, uh, smart, big other smart devices because it's not only about uh, what's been harmonized now, so it's not only the questions of the mobile universal chargers but also the stationary universal, char for sta universal chargers for stationary devices. So that also adds to that uh, that element. So that's from the smartness from, I think, from the, uh, from the recycling part or from e-waste part, you know, that's how, how it's handled. And of course, ITU does a lot of other work on a smart TV or smart devices. We have, a, we have our uh, handbook on accessibility of the television, which is, again, some of the other questions. There is some work, and I will, you know, I'm not now prepared to give the specific question to specific study groups, but if you're interested, I could, we definitely, you know, we could share that information afterwards offline and I could connect with the people who are in standardization uh, sector who work on the various aspects of the smart grids and other standardization aspects, but there's definitely a lot of work going on, not necessarily in the environmental area, but just on general uh, standardization area. And, uh, and regarding uh, Lima, so I think it's something that, again, I would encourage to kind of, I'll give you my contacts to, to contact me, and I'll put the, I'll connect you with the people for organizing that, and they will definitely will see the way you know how it could be made possible for, for you to participate. There. Thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, can I also invite you to tell us a little bit about the workshop of yesterday, and maybe about other activities of ITU, maybe ITUD in this same area? Okay. Thank, thank you very much. So also, so I think as well, so yes, now Paolo, thank you. So very briefly, so as we did, as discussed also, so mainly this work and presentation very well covers the ITUT activities is where the, our standardization work and also there are some activities in other sectors, especially radio communication sector as well, where the, um, uh, especially in terms of harmonizing spectrum used for various uh, applications, especially meteorological applications. And, uh, and various sensors. So, you know, for example, uh, for example, in our World Radio Communications Conference uh, in uh, 12, 2012, there was additional spectrum allocated to oceanographic radars, to the meteorological satellite services, to Earth exploration satellite services, to again to recommendations on uh, collecting and exchanging Earth observation data. So they. Had you know, the work that is also crucial, especially having regard to ITU as a place where, you know, the, the global spectrum gets allocated, it's crucial to have this important resource to be used for, uh, to be used for uh, climate change prevention and, and uh, analysis purposes. At the ED sector, as the main, a, a lot of work is being done on a, on a response element, so basically a disaster disaster management and uh, disaster response element where we have a, a ITUD study group 2 has produced the emergency uh, communications handbook so helping countries to prepare their telecommunications networks and sectors for uh, disasters and also we provide uh, very practical assistance to membership when the disaster strikes with providing them with equipment and uh, uh, even waiving um, and also free communication services for that, you know, when, when they need that uh, in the times of need. So that's part. So yesterday's workshop also was mainly uh, concentrating, even though we discussed more broader climate change issues, mainly concentrating to the disaster uh, management aspects of that question. And we had a, a 
very good, interesting presentation on specific case studies from Indonesia and from Japan. And Japan is in the forefront of that in two terms. And one is not a very good term because it's, they have a disasters and recently the biggest high profile disasters happened in Japan. But also because this is a place where you know, high tech is used to respond to not only to disasters but also general, generally challenges them. Uh, in uh, socioeconomic development, so there's a lot of lessons that can be learned, and especially how to use uh, big data, how to connect various information from various public services, how to collaborate between a um, public sector and private companies, and to set up the quick response abilities using ITT. So in that regard, I think the, for me the most interesting bit also was this intersection between the uh, disaster mitigation, climate change, and other topical issues in the ITT sector. For example, so such issues as privacy, uh, especially when we talk about uh, uh, big data, exchange information disasters, and uh, collecting information allowing people to, uh, to again, inform about their location and uh, respond to events. So that's one issue, so privacy, you know, big data as such. Um, also was... Uh, the other big topic was highlighted, which we at SA2 started working on. So right, people with disabilities and disasters, so what is how the countries are prepared to work uh, in that regard to assist people who actually uh, with certain disabilities in that regard. And you know, I highlighted that ITU recently had October 11th a special event on especially people with disabilities and disasters. Uh, there was also uh, importance of ensure resiliency of networks for the, for the further work to ensure that networks are resilient enough, tele uh, telecommunications networks, to, to withstand uh, these type of activities. But also, generally, it was a highlighted trend that there's still a lack of international coordination and in, in, in disaster response and preparedness to receive international assistance even. So, so that countries, when, when they have an issue, sometimes there is still a lack of practices and frameworks to allow that assistance to come quickly and to be received on the ground quickly. So there is, you know, for me, there's a clear area where ITU could also do more work together with the countries and together maybe with the industrialization sector to allow that um, to happen. So that's most really like a broad overview. From that. Thank you. Thank you again, uh, Thomas, for this uh, briefing. And uh, yes, indeed, uh, this idea of uh, disaster relief uh, using ICT for this issue is extremely important. It's part of actually the different uh, methodologies uh, that are being developed by uh, question 15 uh, on ICT and adaptation. One important focus is also to look into how ICT can be used in observation and uh, uh, disaster relief, collection of information, observation, and then uh, turning that into specific actions in disaster relief uh, activities. And uh, we are indeed uh, coordinating also with the focus group on um, uh, disaster relief uh, that is, uh, has been created. I think it's in ITUG, okay, and uh, coordinated, I believe, by Japan as well, uh, that has very important uh, findings in this domain. Okay, uh, do we have any remote uh, participants by any chance? Excuse me. Do we have any remote participants or any comments by remote participants? There are no comments. Okay. Um, so do we have any comments on the work of the Dynamic Coalition that you would like uh, to share? Any suggestions? I'm just hoping that our next meeting would witness more uh, participation because I think that the potential is huge. So, um, we'll, yes, please. Yes. Yeah, uh, thank you for, uh, you know, your responses and sort of the suggestion. And the one of the things uh, I'm interested in, uh, based on your, like, six-year experiment of this, like, sort of the uh, convergence between the ICT and climate change, uh, it will be interesting to know what has been the collaboration work done by the IT Secretariat and the UNFCCC Secretariat and those who are involved with this, uh, the climate change negotiation. Because uh, based on your uh, presentation at some point, the uh, recommendations developed through this uh, process uh, seems to engage with UNFCCC Secretariat and European Commission 
And so uh, it will be uh, very helpful for you to explain further how ITU Secretariat and also, you know, those the involved multi-stakeholders are, are working together with this UN FCC as well. Yes, please, Tom. So uh, there are a few mechanisms of how ITU coordinates with uh, other UN agencies. So first of all, we are ITU as a co is a co-facilitator of so-called uh, WISIS Action Line 37, which is on uh, e-environment. So that's how we coordinate the act activities of various, uh, or co-coordinate activities of various UN agencies in that area. And, and now especially it's an important time for review with the with the business review process happening, so all the agencies now both provide their activity reports, but also visions for the future, and that's that's where there's a good time to add to that vision, and we would welcome views on that. Also, uh, we participate through the so-called Chief Executives Board process, which is so all the UN agency heads are members of Chief Executives Board, Chief Executive Board of the UN, and uh, that. Uh, body has a sub, a sub body which is a high level committee on programs and through that we coordinate all the again all the activities in terms of climate change and as other thematic areas are coordinating through that and finally ITU actively participates in the meetings of um, of, uh, of of the of part of climate change parties so COP parties which on the negotiations so for example uh, we participated in 2012 if in the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Doha, Qatar. So we both also as an observer, uh, but also helping to bring those issues uh, to the attention of the member of the people who participate there, negotiators. So, for example, in 2012 in Doha, you together with AC Qatar, Ericsson and Broadband Commission organized peace with climate change and a uh, low for a low carbon future. So again, trying to bring atten uh, to the attention of the delegates of those meetings uh, how the issues, how the issues of mitigate those problems uh, that are being discussed in those environments. So these are some of the mechanisms that we're trying to involve other UN agencies as well. Thank you very much, Thomas. I think given actually the, the, the real mechanism of work, I would add to this the GCA, the Joint Cooperation Activity, uh, that is open to Actually, the purpose of the GC is to have the other UN agencies, and in the case of ICC and the environment, the UN FCCC is a very important player in it. And I think that the presence of uh, the ITU in the different COP meetings, particularly in the last couple of years, was very important because it has really introduced the ICT component that did not really appear very well in the different uh, documents of negotiations. And now I feel, as a member countries, I feel a big difference in the way even um, the, the environmental specialists uh, talk to us because they are starting to realize gradually uh, the importance and the relevance of the ICT in these negotiations. So, um, uh, so these are uh, definitely some of the mechanisms that have been used to cooperate with the UNFCCC. Any other questions that uh, you would like to raise? So with that, I... Yes, yes. Yeah, it's not really a question. It's just sort of like the, uh, you know, observation I'm uh, sharing with you as academia. Because uh, whenever we come to the IGF, we always talk about this multi-stakeholder forum, right? Uh, but uh, this the concept of multi-stakeholderism has been uh, in international relations and global governance negotiation for a long time. So as far as I understand, multi-stakeholderism in climate change is totally different from the multi-stakeholderism in internet governance forum people are talking about. So basically, multi-stakeholderism in uh, climate change is a very traditional UN uh, kind of multi-stakeholderism. That means like governments make decisions, and the civil societies and the private sectors they are like uh, yeah they have observer status, where they will be invited to some of the session 
but most decisions will be made by governments. And on the other hand, this IGF is a really uh, experimental process of multi-stakeholderism, which never existed in this global governance process. So it, it's going to be very, very interesting uh, joint efforts between those who have different way of implementing multi-stakeholderism in their own arena. Like sort of when we, uh, like ICT need climate change, because ICT has a very different concept of multi-stakeholderism, which doesn't really have like harmonious kind of the way of model of multi-stakeholderism in climate change. So maybe one of the things, dynamic coalition of ICT and you know, climate change can look into is this kind of the different mode of multi-stakeholderism between two subject matter in global governance. Because I mean, that's the sort of like fascinating subject matter uh, from academia, uh, you know, who have been doing research on different kinds of global governance model. Thank you very much for this comment. This is extremely relevant and thank you for pointing this out because there is indeed a, a difference in the way multi-stakeholderism has been used. In the case of the work of the ITUT, I think it was uh, the, the, the modern multi-stakeholderism because all, all participants, sector members, have the, diff the same say to a large extent or a, 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 a strong presence in, in the work. Uh, but yes, thank you for that, and I will take note of your comment in the report of uh, the session, uh, certainly for discussion. Any comment? Okay, thank you so much for your attention, and uh, hope to see you uh, very soon again. Thank you.